St Helens is a small seaside township on the east coast of Tasmania and there is a channel that goes out into the Tasman Sea. St Helens Bar is well known as a place where lots of people have come to grief. It was back in 1990 and we were camping with some friends on St George's Bay at St Helens in Tasmania just near the bar that goes out into the Tasman Sea. We had our little cruising dinghy moonlight and our three children who were ranging from about six to four I think at that stage. Our friends were on a Sonata 6. They also had three children. The weather had been beautiful and we thought it would be safe to take moonlight out through the St Helens Bar and across to a spot where we'd planned to do some snorkeling to catch some crayfish and some abalone. So we loaded three children into the boat with life jackets and two adults with wetsuits and we headed out through the mouth of the river into the Tasman Sea. We headed across in a southeasterly direction to the rocky outcrop where we were planning to do some snorkeling. It was perfectly flat when we started out, but about halfway across the bay, we noticed that the swell was starting to pick up, quite dramatically in fact, and the little boat was struggling to get up over the crest of the waves. A large set of waves came through and it was just too much for moonlight. We found ourselves washed up on the shore. We pushed the boat up onto the sand and bailed her out. So we drained the petrol out, dried it out as best as we could, put it all back together, and being a little Honda, it started first time. Interestingly, the children and my friend decided that they would walk back while I renegotiated the bar heading back in. So I powered up the motor and headed back through the bar, which I managed to traverse without any incident this time. There are many things to learn from an incident like this. The first thing is never to underestimate what can happen with a falling tide and rising swells. Within just a few minutes, the situation can change dramatically. Fortunately, we had the sense to put life jackets on all the children. It may have been quite difficult to handle had they been in the water without life jackets. So we didn't get to go snorkeling that day, but we did manage to all get safely back to camp to share the stories. It was interesting that uh, a few weeks later, we were driving with our three children in the car and my eldest daughter said, Dad, I will never get in a boat again. What she didn't know was that Denise and I had already committed to two years at sea on MV Doulos. Not only would Madeline get to go on a boat again, but she'd get to live on one permanently for two years. In early 1993, we sold everything packed our possessions into five large nylon bags and loaded our kids onto a 747 headed for Sri Lanka. The MV Doulos became our home for the next two years as we worked as volunteers taking books, aid and hope to some of the poorest countries in the world. The MV Doulos was built in 1914, just two years after the Titanic. In 1993, she was the oldest ocean-going passenger liner in the world. We ventured from India to Africa, the Middle East, Europe and the Mediterranean. If you subscribe to our channel, you'll get early notification when Adventures On Board Doulos goes live very soon. Mm -hmm.